Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white life gain deck, but unlike most life gain decks that play lots of creatures that synergize whenever you gain life, this is a much more controlling build that tries to keep the board clear to leverage its many card draw engines and planeswalkers, and then we can eventually win the game with those planeswalkers, or we can assemble some of our infinite combos, and of course we're playing many combos with exquisite blood. This 5 mana enchantment says whenever our opponent loses life, we gain that much life, and exquisite blood goes infinite with a ham sandwich pretty much. There's a lot of effects that say whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life, Sanguine Bond being a prime example. So if we have both enchantments in play at the same time and either gain life or make the opponent lose life, we'll eventually set up this infinite loop where our opponent loses the game. So that's the idea behind the deck. And our commander is actually not hugely important for the deck to function. We're playing Kaya, Ors of Usurper, as a relatively cheap planeswalker that can help control the board early by exiling per permanents with mana value one or less, and then the plus one can also help keep graveyards clear, so we don't have to worry about any graveyard shenanigans. If we exile creatures with a plus one, we also gain some life, so that's also potentially a way to kickstart the exquisite blood combo once we do finally assemble it. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, I've split it up into a few different categories to help with the deck breakdown. The first one being mana acceleration. Do need a little bit of ramp if we were trying to cast 6 and 7 mana planeswalkers. Then we've got lots of spot removal, can answer creatures, artifacts, enchantments, you name it. Then we've got a bunch of interaction, which includes even some white counter spells. We've got some discard spells in black, and then some sweepers as well to complement our spot removal. And then uh, next up is our card draw section. We've got lots of enchantments that can draw several cards, and then our planeswalkers are also good for repeatedly drawing extra cards each turn. And then we get to the combo section, which includes Exquisite Blood and the other cards that can go infinite with it. And then the miscellaneous section includes a few tutor effects to maybe help assemble those combos or just to find our powerful finishers. And then some other cards that synergize well in the deck in general. So that's the deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration. Of course, can go wrong with Dark Ritual, great at ramping out some of our planeswalkers. We've got a Lotho, which promotes double spelling to make treasure tokens. Our opponent can also enable it. And then we've got a bunch of ramp artifacts, Arcane Signet and Cold Seal Heart. Kind of the artifacts that produce colored mana, since we do have some pretty color intensive cards. If we look at some of our triple colored enchantments. And then we're also often playing Kaya on turn 3, so we're not really looking to ramp from 2 to 4 all that often, so it's fine to skip a 2 mana ramp card. But I do like File of Galadriel, since it can also maybe draw us additional cards or gain additional life. Pristine Talisman can also set up some of our life gain synergies. Same with the Celestus, which can also give us some card selection as it switches between day and night. And then Warden Power Stone, making 2 mana when we get to untap with it is quite strong. And Farmind Vessel is very similar, making colored mana instead. Then our Spot Removal includes Swords to Plowshares at 1 mana, Cut Down and Fatal Push in black. Then we've got Get Lost, which is quite versatile. Sanctify specifically destroying artifacts and enchantments, but we also gain some life. Bitter Triumph can also deal with Planeswalkers. I've got Gopher to Throat, Heartless Act, and Shoot to Sheriff as my preferred removal for creatures at 2 mana in black. Whereas Shieldress Edict is a bit more versatile, can also deal with Planeswalkers. And then in black-white you get some versatile removal spells as well, like Despark, Fracture for artifacts, enchantments, and planeswalkers, and Vanishing Verse for monocolored permanents. And then a Dismember we can also often cast for just one mana, if we just want the efficiency, since we've got a life gain to make up for it. And then Oath of Kaya also pretty good when our planeswalker is a commander, and plenty of other planeswalkers throughout. And then a March of Wretched Sorrow can also gain us more life if needed. And then looking at our author interaction, we've got our white counter spells, Mana Tithe and Reprieve, can sometimes catch the opponent off guard. Our discard includes Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek, and Thoughtseize at 1 mana. Collective Brutality at 2 mana is also quite versatile. Can either use it as a discard spell for instance and sorceries, can also take out creatures, can maybe even escalate it to choose multiple modes. Deep Cavern Bats, a 1-1 Life Linker, can also set up some of our synergies while taking a look at the opponent's hand. And then we've got some board wipes. Toxic Deluge can usually make up for the life loss. Path of Peril can also cleave it for 6, and then Damnation's a new addition to Arena, thanks to the special guests, and then Grief we can occasionally play for free if we evoke it. And then our card draw includes the Archivist, pretty good when everyone's playing fetch lands nowadays. We've got Revitalize, just gain 3 draw card. Union can often gain more than 3 draw card. And then we've got our card draw enchantments, Black Market Connections, Frex and Arena drawing an extra card each turn. And then the Necro enchantments can often draw 5 or 6 cards per turn if we've got the life for it. And then our Planeswalkers include Professor Onyx, 
can also gain us some additional life if we cast instants and sorceries. Sorin can deal damage and gain life or deal damage and draw cards. And then we've got Kaya and Tangible Slayer, which can also do a lot of powerful things. And then Bolas the Citadel, also a lot of fun if we can start playing spells at the cost of life instead of paying mana. So it can lead to some very exciting turns. And then we get to the combo section. We already mentioned Exquisite Blood and Sanguine Bond. Then there's the new Enduring Tenacity, which can replace Sanguine Bond. Same with Veto. This one deals damage equal to the amount of life we gain, whereas Marauding Blind Priest only makes the opponent lose one life, no matter how much life we gained. And uh, Starscape Cleric, also very similar. Can also cast it with Offspring to make an additional token version of it. And then our miscellaneous section, including a few tutor effects, idyllic tutor to find enchantments, so it can still assemble all the life gain combos. Grim tutor can get any card. And then we also have insatiable avarice, which we can cast with spree to maybe put something on top while drawing extra cards. Sunset revelry, good against aggro, making tokens and gaining life, or maybe drawing a card. And then a shield root, also very good, especially in combination with cards like Necrodominance, which can gain us a lot of life while we draw cards. Not quite as good with the other enchantment. And then our mana base has two planes, 15 swamps, since we have a lot of triple black cards, so we want to avoid drawing too many planes. And we can also fetch up our basics or our dual lands with all the fetch lands we have. And then can also maybe get Godless Shrine or the Backstreet to surveil if we don't need an untapped land. Plenty of black-white dual lands for mana fixing, most of them untapped. And then a command tower and kind of the usual fetch lands, all the black and or white fetch lands we can get our hands on. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Umori, so we'll see what card type they chose. I guess it's not a companion, it's just a commander. So yeah, they are still allowed to have different card types. Either way, our hand seems reasonable. Got some creature removal, some ramp. Hopefully find some of our card draw engines. Although once empty-handed file is also pretty good. And we can surveil end of turn. Right, so this probably just focused on creatures, which is not too surprising. Kaya might be able to exile the halfling, so I don't feel the need to dismember it now. And swamp I'll keep. Good to keep hitting our land drops. Makes it easier to be empty-handed for file. Can still dismember a potential three mana creature here. And then Kaya exiles Halfling. That point's gonna take out our Signets. That's acceptable. So next turn we could go file tap lands. If they play Omori, I can dismember it. Right, opponent's got Liliana of the Veil vale to make us discard. Yeah, we're maybe not the best at pressuring planeswalkers, so that could be an issue. Although again, getting file in play is going to be good. And then I don't mind just getting value out of Kaya by exiling the Mox Amber. Opponent's Got a Liliana, Dreadhor General, so possible this Umori is actually going to name Planeswalker. And then finding an answer to Liliana is going to be of utmost importance. I guess we'll revitalize. And yeah, Brutality doesn't seem great. Cannot get rid of Planeswalkers, only instants and sorceries. And there's Umori. All right, Union can gain some more life. Opponent did indeed name Planeswalker. So Kaya's gonna plus. And then... Yeah, I guess we Union first, see what we draw. All right, seven mana Kaya. The plot thickens. So I won't be able to keep that in hand realistically. So Liliana's going to make me discard it. And then may as well dismember Umori now before they get to make use of the discount. 
And then at least if we're empty-handed, file draws two cards. Although we'll also need to find an answer to Liliana, or else we're in trouble. Silent Clearing gives me a redraw. So it's not the best. Could also keep land in hand in case they ultimate here. So tough call. Yeah, I think I'm just keeping the clearing in hand. And then we'll see if they want to ultimate Liliana or if they wait. Alright, opponent's going to keep plussing. Hardless Act can go. And they ditched uh, Nissa, and now Bolas' Citadel is going to be awesome. Shoot the Sheriff on top, maybe not the best, admittedly. Alright, um, yeah, Kaya keeps plussing. And then now I'm tempted to just keep Citadel no matter what. Even if they split Citadel versus everything else. Which is why I'm keeping land in hand. Now they also have artifact removal in hand. After I keep Citadel I'm gonna be sad. Yeah, one drawback of Citadel when our opponent doesn't present any creatures is that we're gonna eventually find a removal spell that I wouldn't be able to cast right away. Alright, so select a pile to sacrifice. They even gave me land and file in addition to Bolas' Citadel, so that's generous. Mana Tithe on top. Yeah, I guess I can still cast it in the opponent's turn as well. Kinda happy if they make me discard with Liliana, because it means I get to potentially draw two with file. Invasion, I can counter unless they pay one. Yeah, I kind of just want to get rid of the Mana Tithe in a way. So I can draw into more relevant spells. Opponent pays. Does Liliana keep plussing? Nope, opponent has learned their lesson. And now Bitter Triumph can destroy Liliana. Alright, and... I think I even consider discarding Shoot to Sheriff here. Since life is a pretty valuable resource with Bolasa Citadel. And Grief on top. Don't mind if I do. Don't want to play my land yet. And opponent's got some Planeswalkers. Take the cheaper one. Talisman can gain life back. Tenacity is now just missing. Exquisite Blood to combo off. And Scry Connections, probably not needed when we have Citadel, since they both cost life. And our opponent has seen enough, that's why we love Bolas' Citadel. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Xur, Eternal Schemer, so enchantments. What do we think of our hand? Got some good interaction, Fracture should be good. And then work our way up to Professor Onyx. Could use some cheaper card draw engines in the meantime. But uh, we have interaction aplenty. Even get lost can destroy enchantments, so as far as spot removal goes, we found the good ones. And Arid Mesa can maybe fetch a Surveil Land end of turn. Although I'm somewhat likely to want to fracture something, I think. Alright, now we can scry or play Kaya. I guess we'll go with Kaya. Can start plussing. Connections, we definitely want to destroy when we get the chance. Even though playing shield is a good way to punish it. But I would rather not have them ramp. So we can Fracture versus Get Lost. I think I Fracture. Keep Get Lost for creatures. You're not welcome here. And then now I think I Scry. Vanishing Verse, another way to maybe deal with an enchantment. If they play their commander, we can still dismember it. Or 
our opponent surveils and they borrow time to answer Kaya. Yeah, we'll send it back to the command zone. Don't think I'm too worried about replaying Kaya. Can play Shieldred. And then if they answer Shieldred with an enchantment, we can blow that up. Now, of course, with the Xur, their enchantments can still turn into creatures. So they do have a dual function. Opponent's gonna exile Shieldred here. But we will be able to get it back. So that's their turn gone. We get to surveil. Line 6 is fine. Revitalize, I probably don't need. And another Kaya. Alright, so we've got our top end. For now, get Shieldred back. Pass a turn. And now a stasis field. Lose all its abilities. And Zer. Alright, so I've got a couple options. Can get lost uh, stasis field. Could just full price dismember Zer. Make them replay it. Um, kind of like get lost stasis field, untap, and then hopefully Professor Onyx take out Zur. Although then I also have to watch out for, let's say if they replay Zur and have a land, they could still animate the borrow time. So then I would have to trade for shield root, which isn't great either. So yeah, maybe I'll take out Zur anyway. And then we can start plussing our Planeswalkers if we can run them out. Can always play 5 mana Kaya here. Alright, that's better. Can start plussing. And try and hit line 7 for our author Kaya. Didn't quite get there. Cut down still answers Zur without needing a revolt. Soren, we can potentially enable if we gain enough life here with Intangible Slayer as well. So both are decent options. I think I take the cut down though. And then I feel okay attacking with Shieldred. Even though they can replay Zer and activate it, we would still keep our Professor Onyx alive. Kaya can also exile enchantments. So we actually ended up drawing almost all of our enchantment removal. Opponent bounces Shieldreds. I guess rooms are pretty good with Xur, since if they animate them, it will be the combined mana value. And now a Spirit Sister's Call. Going for lands. Stasis Field doesn't have many targets. Kaya also cleaning up the graveyard makes Spirit Sister's Call less effective. So. Onyx can keep plussing. Find a land. Sanctify is good too. So many good options. Don't think we need Grim Tutor. We have enough Planeswalkers to win the game here. Yeah, Sanctify. Destroy the Sister's Call. Not too worried about the room. So maybe that's the pick here. Also triggers Professor Onyx. And replay Shieldreds. Also reasonable to check out their hand with Brutality first, but yeah, our opponent has already seen enough. Just too much enchantment removal for their deck to deal with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand facing Kyodai, so it could be five color good stuff. At least we'll have one tutor to find one of our potential combo pieces. Could have kept up Mana Tithe, I suppose, if we were willing to pay one life. But the five color decks tend to have a lot of tap lands. So, can maybe have a look with Brutality, discarding an instant or sorcery. And our opponent's got plenty of counter spells, Restoration for Ramp, Snapcaster to flash back, Emperor. So, pretty stacked hand. How close are they to triple blue? Yeah, they might get there. Maybe 
still take it over Sublime Epiphany, since it can keep up Charm and Restoration at the same time. Opponent Island cycles. So next turn we can use Kaya to exile their graveyard, so Snapcaster is not an issue. And we found Priest, so now we know that Grim Tutor getting our uh, Exquisite Blood could set up a combo. Yeah, then again I could also pass with Mana Tithe available to counter their Skyclave Relic, although they might just pass with Entish Restoration available. So then I'm not going to get too much value out of keeping up 3 mana. They have a swamp for cemetery to enter untapped. And the opponent's going to pass, so now we can mana tithe the restoration. We'll tutor. And get exquisite blood. And Kayak M plus. Pack your bags and hit the road. All right, so hopefully that sets them back and gives us time to combo off. So yeah, while the coast is clear, I resolve exquisite blood. Kaya keeps plussing. And then, yeah, Blind Priest can set off the chain as long as we can gain life. Currently, there's no creature in the graveyard for Kaya to exile and gain life. I guess the minus five from Kaya could work since they did not flash in their commander end of turn. And I guess they were missing double white for Emperor. Couple lands in graveyard. And now Skyclave. So we should have it. Play Blind Priest. Ultimate Kaya. And start triggering. And there we have it. Unless their last unknown card happens to be removal. Which it doesn't appear to be the case. And that's the satisfying machine gun combo of triggers all happening automatically, so no need to click. Just sit back, relax, grab a sandwich, maybe a cold drink. Awesome. And there we go, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Omnath, Locus of the Royal, so definitely the real deal. What do we think of our hands? We've got Blight Priest, missing Exquisite Blood. How good is Brutality in this matchup, or Fracture? Probably not that great. I'll take a mulligan. Alright, I'll uh, try this. Celestus, also a form of card selection if it switches between day and night. Damnation should be effective if they mostly rely on creatures. Opponent got rid of an Epiphany. Can maybe fetch a Surveil Land if they don't make me Reprieve. Although if they have a 1 mana permanent we can exile it with Kaya. And some other creature we can also maybe Oath of Kaya. Vanishing Verse, probably not at its best here. Omnath is multicolored. So sure, well, Celestus. Now our opponent could still play a ramp spell at instant speed, a grow spiral for instance, and then resolve Omnath next turn. But then should still be able to take it out with Oath. And yeah, Planar Genesis, kind of the newer grow spiral variant.
Kaya exiling lands from the graveyard can also potentially stop some land recursion from happening. And, uh, yeah. This turn, I think, play Kaya. And then keep up her previous fine. Wanna tap Celestas just in case they can destroy it. Always a good habit to keep lands available as opposed to artifacts when possible. And her opponent's gonna counter for one mana. Don't hate Reprieving here, since that strands them with a 3-mana Wash Away going forward. But I also want to kind of Wash Away Omnath instead. And again, I'm not too concerned about resolving Kaya. Another play we could have made is to Reprieve our own Kaya, just to kind of fizzle the Wash Away draw card. Which is a play you used to make with Remand in Modern. All right, Sanguine Bonds. Can try and resolve that. And then go Shields down or Reprieve versus Oath of Kaya take out to Leafkin. That way I can maybe wait on Damnation for a bit longer. Yeah, we can play it slow. Next turn I'll be able to play Sanguine Bond with Reprieve backup. Still not going for Omnath, it seems. Ashaya, I'm happy to reprieve. And then now a Sanguine Bond, keep up Revitalize. Which can also now deal 3 damage. There's Ashaya again. May just need to 1 for 1 Damnation it. Ooh, never mind. Intangible Slayer. And Inquisition. So we've got a lot of exciting options. Inquisition to check for a counter spell wouldn't be a bad idea. And then I can still play Kaya. Alright, Ponon does have a stubborn denial, as it turns out, so that would have been a hard counter. So definitely take that. And then now. If I play Kaya, we could exile Shaya. Yeah, probably better than just going for Damnation here. And then Kaya has Hexproof, so it's not like they can target it with Omnath. So they're more likely to take out our Ashaya token. They will get to draw some cards. Opponent keeping up the restoration. Alright, so can uh, draw with Kaya. Do I fetch first? Don't think so. Opponent gets to scry. So now if they surge, they will shuffle that away and get lost to draw. So can play 5 mana Kaya. Start blessing. And then if they were to cast a Restoration, we can respond with Get Lost. And want to prioritize lands and creatures, I guess. So we trigger Kaya, which in turn triggers Sanguine Bond. And then I'm hoping they cast a Restoration here. Bonan doesn't. Alright, so they were definitely being patient. Although I can still respond to the Omnath trigger with a Get Lost before it goes up to 4 power. Which is maybe why they were waiting here. Get to trigger Oath of Kaya, so good to let them attack first. Although they could have drawn into a Counterspell now. Our opponent will cast a Restoration after all. So they'll get some Omnath triggers. But this still worked. Alright. Hopefully Kaya can keep drawing action. Mythweaver is a scary one. And they still have a land left. At least it's not a fetch land. Now, 
I could mine us some Mythweaver to get my own copy, since we have a bunch of fetch lands as well. Although I'm not sure what all that mana does for me. Yeah, having a bunch of mana doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I guess I can activate Celestus more easily to dig for Exquisite Blood. Although I think the play of casting Damnation and just drawing with Kaya is fine. So let's do that. Alright, Bolas' Citadel is exciting. Haven't played land for turn yet. And the Union is gonna gain me a ton of life. And the Spark answers Mythweaver, and our opponent scoops it up. Can uh, plus Kaya to maybe gain more life and deal more damage. And before you know it, our opponent's gonna be dead. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Arabella, so an aggressive red-white deck. Yeah, I think we can keep. Lotho should generate a couple treasures if our opponent's a low-curve deck. And then we already have the uh, Blight Priest. So we just need Exquisite Blood to combo off. And give her runes. We can just exile with Kaya. Yeah, our deck's pretty good at dealing with one drops. And a hasty squee. Could have been a reason to keep Lotho back to protect Kaya. But honestly, happy we got a one for one trade here. Alright, and then if I were to play Sorin and cast Revitalize, I'll get a treasure. Can I then still use a treasure to pay for extorts? But I guess it's worth a try. So we have two triggers, want a treasure first. And then we can pay for extorts, which will help transform Sorin. And what does Sorin do? Can. can finish off Squee. But I will catch you. And then if they play Arabella, it doesn't damage my Planeswalker. Gonna be a beetle bank making a bunch of tokens. Alright, so make a food. Can Inquisition to have a look. Yeah, the tokens are quite scary with Arabella. Don't have insta speed removal for it. Can start mowing down tokens, I guess. Let's have a look first with Inquisition. And then do I pay extort? Not yet. Alright, they had a Krenko and Impact Tremors left. Impact Tremors would have been better if they already had it in play. I'll take Krenko since I don't have an immediate answer to it. And then Dark Ritual. Can then play Kaya and extort. Would have been good to have the Blind Priest in play in the meantime. Ooh, I like a good fight. Also want to think about exiling Squee at some point with Kaya. Bon plays a Tremors into Arabella. Yep. I'm going after Sorin. I'll take the trade here. Fatal push was excellent. So start with priests. Pay for extort. And then I'll probably just plus get rid of some creatures. Trigger blind priest. 
And then I can still Fatal Push Arabella, although we can maybe wait for that. And Soren makes a food. Alright, O'Hare attack. Tripling their tokens. Could be quite good. So we are going for Arabella here. And then I'll just fetch a basic. Pay the extort, drain them with a Blight Priest, and then next turn if we sack our two food tokens, we have enough life gain to take out O'Hare attack. So then they would need enough creatures in play to transform it, which is going to take them a while. And then in the meantime, if we find a tutor or an exquisite blood or some card draw engine, we can take over. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw facing Raydan. Can make some of our non-creature spells more expensive. At least we're not running snow lanes. And yeah, we've got a keeper. A ramp into Kaya might be the plan. Opponent might have a one drop, but yeah, they know about our commander, which is good at dealing with him. That being said, Sentinel's still very effective, as it will slow us down by a whole turn. Curse of Silence now naming Kai, I'm sure. So, could play the Signet, let them draw, and then next turn I can Deluge and pay the one potentially. I guess if they play Raidan, yeah, we're still fine to Deluge. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Just gives us more options as opposed to just passing. Even though I guess Reprieve was also an option there. But I'm happy if they play Raidan and we get to wipe their board. We don't need Kaya for our deck to function, so don't really mind the curse for now. And Grand Abolisher, that's okay, although it does make our reprieve a lot worse. Ooh, Winter Moon. Was not expecting that one. Good thing we have a bunch of fetch lands here. So we want to get as many basics in play as possible. And then, yeah, I wouldn't be able to reprieve. Could Damnation just for the Abolisher, but that feels weak. Yeah, our deck's not too greedy in terms of non-basic lands. But uh, yeah, Winter Moon's always going to be somewhat effective against a multicolor deck. Opponent partitions the Signets, can't respond. I guess we can at least fetch. But uh, yeah, normally I would get a backstreet, now we're forced to get a planes. And then... Could play Kaya, exile the curse. Although they might just sacrifice it in response, so then Kaya doesn't accomplish much. So I'll just replay a Signet then. And wanna fetch a basic. If they replay Raidan, we can maybe Damnation, although we're close to casting Kaya as well. Sentry exile my Signet. They don't want me to have it. That's alright, we're not under too much pressure. If I want Swords Abolisher, I have to do it now. Or we can just Damnation anyway. And that clears a path for Kaya. Yeah, let's give it a shot possible our opponents got their own reprieve in hand which would also be effective at uh, countering our planeswalker all right signet's back and now we can reprieve once again Oketra is a good one to exile but for now i'll still reprieve it since it cost them five mana Keep uh, fetching up basics, that's nice. And then, 
yeah, we could cast the Intangible Slayer. Would also be a good answer to God Eternal. But for now, we'll draw. I don't move without knowing my target. Put on kept on top. There's not going to be too many answers to a planeswalker with hexproof. Soren's great too. So we're living the dream. Find a duress. Professor Onyx, good answer. God Eternal. So yeah, opponent has seen enough. They're just too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jeru and Hazret, so an aggressive Legends deck. Our hand has plenty of card draw, engines, some interaction, so I'll keep. Can keep a Mana Tithe turn 1, if not, fetch a Surveil Land to look for land 3. And then probably want to play Arena before we play Necro. And keep a Swamp. If we don't need to Mana Tithe, we can Revitalize. Boots? Yeah, that's fine. We can maybe Mana Tithe Jeru itself. And then start with the Arena. So we get to draw two cards per turn. Magda's next with the boots, pretty good. Although still dies to Toxic Deluge. So, could use Kaya to just exile their treasure token. Doesn't seem great when Magda can just attack Kaya again. Deluge is a little bit drastic, but might still be the correct play. Only costs us one life. And if they tap out for Jero, we can counter it. They probably wait since they want to equip the boots, which is kind of accidentally going to play around Mana Tithe. But then we can keep up a Get Lost instead. Captain Landry, once again, pretty good, making a treasure right away. Alright, so Mana Tithe not quite hitting its mark. And a Conduit Goblin making energy. Another way of giving Jero haste, I suppose. Alright, well, I guess we can keep wiping the board here. And hope they don't have another land. If they do, I can still mana tithe. Forcing them to tap out, and then we don't need to worry about Hasty Jeru. Bones got an Ajani instead, pretty good too. And a Trailblazing Historian, another Haste Enabler. Well, we've drawn our fair share of board wipes, can't expect to keep finding them. And then... Can go for Kaya here, Exile the Cat token. And then lose Kaya next turn, but I'll still have Get Lost available and shoot the Sheriff. Yeah, that seems okay. Alright, perfect. We finally got there. Mana Tithe your 5 drop. And we can save Kaya. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Imskir, Iron Eater, so red black artifacts. Our hands a little bit lackluster. I don't think brutality is gonna be at its best here. So I'll take my free mulligan. Yeah, this might be a little bit better. Got our tenacity, so just missing exquisite blood. So you try and combo off. For now, I'll keep up 
cut down. Turn two, keep up reprieve. One's gonna pilfer, so can take away a non-land card, including the tenacity. Might go for citadel if they're scared of it. Yep, citadel gone. That's all right. Although now they know about reprieve. Opponent already has two artifacts. Tries mindstone. Yeah, let's just slow them down just a tad. And a vessel would have been great at setting up citadel. And now we are probably just going to play Kaya, exile the fountain. Reduce number of artifacts. And a cloud key naming artifact is next. And a mind stone. And a lemboss for one mana. So opponent's storming off here. And then lemboss does not fix their color, so they're still missing red. Alright, I'll minus while we can. And play Vessel, I think. Don't have many fetchable lanes left for our white fetch lanes, since we happen to draw planes. The rest can have a look. Probably going for one of the removal spells. No, it goes for Union. And Phyrexian Arena was an excellent draw. I think I prefer that over anything else. So we can still cast Edict if they play Imskir. Although they would still draw a bunch of cards. One's gonna draw, looking for red mana. And the Basilisk Caller for free can give Death Touch and Lifelink. Can also exile it with Kaya. And our opponent's gonna take it out because of that. Fair enough. I'm gone for now, but not forever. Take our turn. And find 7 mana Kaya, don't mind if I do. I would let the opponents cry here if I draw 2. I think it's still worth it. So we've got a boatload of removal in hand. Opponent bottomed. So we did help them out. Visage. Can take away another card. Goes for Tenacity, so we'll need a replacement to try and combo now. But with Kaya we get to see a lot of cards. Ooh, Tithing Blade. Luckily it doesn't make us sacrifice a Planeswalker, that could have been bad. As we find another Planeswalker. Yeah, probably just keep using the zero for now. Can go wrong with drawing extra cards. And then Professor Onyx can also keep plussing. Really and what do we like? Maybe a Grief. Can play it now. Oh, Cut down can go. I guess maybe go for the throat is not great in this matchup either, although Imskir itself can still be targeted. And they had a braid left. Okay, that works. Pass a turn. Avarice can tutor up one of our combo pieces. Probably Exquisite Blood. And our opponent's just too far behind here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tamiyo, Completed Sage. Can be pretty effective at tapping down our artifacts. 
to slow us down. Blue-green is gonna have maybe counter spells and artifact and enchantment removal, so it could prove to be a tricky matchup. Our hand seems fine though. Got a ramp into Professor Onyx, Cleric as a way to enable the Exquisite Blood combo. And then we can fetch a Surveil Land here. Opponent's got the Elf, can eventually get exiled by Kaya, but still gonna get to untap first. And Swamp I'll keep, just good to hit our next few land drops. Could have waited to play this with Offspring, but just need one in play for the combo, and Blue Green's not gonna have much creature removal. Opponent says no to Vorinclank's Voice of Hunger. And sure, we'll try Kaya, which may get countered here. Opponent also didn't attack with Elves, so that's a little suspicious. But I don't mind if Kaya gets countered. It does not. Can they protect the Elves, maybe? Nope. Alright, so that worked out. Next turn we can play a 3-mana Artifact plus Heartless Act. Kaya exiles a creature, gains life, triggers Cleric. And prefer resolving the Celestus or keeping that in place, so maybe give them a Talisman first. Eh, that's resolved pretty easily. And this can also immediately gain life to trigger Cleric, so I'll put an end step stop to make sure we just tap it to gain a life. Right, opponent runs out Tamio, keeping the graveyard clean with Kaya also counteracts the minus ability, and they're gonna keep our cleric tap down. Right, fair enough. Take my turn. They could have decided to tap down my talisman as well. So now I get to resolve Professor Onyx, which does not make them sack a planeswalker sadly, but still. Providing extra card advantage is nice. Really <laughs> and how about a shield roots? No creatures, so I'll just submit zero. If I mill the creature, then maybe I exile it here just to gain two life. Opponent's gonna deep freeze the cleric now. They've had enough. And time your locks down my talisman. Okay, so keep plussing, finding some powerful card draw enchantments. Necro vs. Connections. Necro doesn't quite synergize with Shieldritz, Necro Dominance does. Um, so maybe I prefer Connections here, it's kind of close. I do have some life gain to make up for the life loss from Necro, so either way, it's not a bad card here. So for now, I can go Celestus into a 4-drop. Did not seem like that a counter spell, so I'll go for Shieldred here. And Kaya can plus. Tatiova is a good one. Finally have a target for Heartless Act. Although Shieldred also punishing the card draw from Tantiova at least. So now there's going to be a creature in the graveyard for Kaya to exile and gain life. And then, uh, yeah, they're not going to be able to get it back with Tamyo. And the Planeswalkers are just going to pull ahead. Alright, so we got to see our black-white life gain control in action. Got to pull off the exquisite blood combo once or twice, and then won some other games just playing our powerful 6 and 7 mana planeswalkers or Bolas Citadel. So there's enough going on that we're not a single minded deck, and it's also not a deck that relies too much on its commander, which is a nice change of pace. So even if Kaya gets answered, it's fine, but at the same time, it also provides us with a way to maybe enable the exquisite blood combo once we have all the pieces, and it's also just good interaction, giving us graveyard hate, so we don't need to worry about any graveyard shenanigans as well as occasionally answering some one mana permanent.
commandments. So yeah, all in all, a powerful deck. And because the commander itself isn't particularly busted, the opposition's also not going to be too powerful. So if you prefer facing some mid-power decks as opposed to the top-tier commanders, Kaya as your commander is a pretty good fit for these life gain combos. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.